the BBC News. I'm Lucy. I'm Kate. I'm George. I'm Heather. And I'm Esme. Today we have produced a report looking into people's perspective on mental health. There are many different views about this subject. Um, I think there's still uh, a huge stigma attached to any mental health issue. Yeah. Um, even even with um, the sad stories of Robin Williams, you know, famous people that have suffered with mental health problems, yeah. it it hasn't really done anything to raise the profile. People are still ashamed about mental health issues. Um, what are your views on mental illnesses? Um, I think um, it's really sad when people suffer from mental, mental illnesses. Um, I have, uh, my father-in-law uh, suffered from manic depression and it's caused a great deal of sadness for his family. Mental illness should be treated like physical illness or physical disability. I think it's that yeah. serious. I think the impacts of mental illness are as bad, or in some cases even worse than physical illness yeah. and disability. So I think it should be really, really high priority to, to deal with that. Yeah. That it isn't, at the minute, treated as seriously as physical illnesses. And yeah. if you say to people that you are depressed or you've got anxiety issues, and a lot of the time people will say to you to cheer up or to be happy. Yeah. And it's a bit like saying to somebody who's got, I don't know, diabetes, be happy and the diabetes will go away. Mm. Or cheer up yeah. and the diabetes will go away. It's not going to happen. So it needs to be taken more seriously. Um, well, I think mental illnesses are quite important and they need to be treated with respect. But I'm not sure exactly what else to say. It's quite a serious thing, but I don't know. It's uh, really sad and I think it should be really raised awareness about because it is a really serious thing and it should be really uh, cared for. Being mental illness is a very serious um, problem for many young people and and I don't think there's enough like help for them. advice about mental illnesses and what we should be doing about them and how to respect others about it but I think we could do even more. Yeah. I don't know. Do you not know? So no. does nobody tell you what it is? No. Okay. I'm not a smart child. Do you think that during my school's lessons we learned quite a bit about mental illness and I think my group did a project about mental illness and so I think it's really important and that we actually care. I am pretty well educated actually. School definitely offers support. You get to talk to people about it, they understand you, they don't judge you for it, and you get to learn about it in other lessons so you understand the differences with people. So I think it's all good in lessons and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know that school offers several different support systems for those who suffer with mental illnesses, and so I think they do a really good job about, you know, about helping them. I don't really know, but if I was thinking, I don't really think there's much. Yes, they do. Um, they would probably be under the care of the pastoral team. Yeah. Um, if it was one of my form members um, or a student that I, I actually taught, I would try um, and get as much information as I can. We're limited as to how much information we are actually privy to yeah. as teachers. Even if we make a referral of a student who we suspect may have a problem, um, we don't always fa and find out the end. Okay the end outcome yeah. so we're limited I do whatever whatever is in my power yeah um, I would make sure that they were talking to people about it I make sure they knew uh, about the pastoral team and things at school so they knew uh, where they could go if they needed more support um, and I just try to offer any support I could so just to want to listen to what's going on or 
uh, help network them with the people that they need to meet with. Uh, as a school we've got sort of procedures in place so if we have concerns there's ways of reporting it to SLT and the child protection officer and the, the members of staff who sort of pick up those, those okay. sort of incidents so I'll go through that, that sort of procedure. Yeah. That's really difficult. If I suspected self-harming, that's actually a child protection issue, so I would have to refer it yeah. um, onto our child protection team within the school. Yeah. Um, if a student came to me and disclosed that they'd been self-harming, um, again, that that's a different... Um, a different kettle of fish completely I would listen yeah um, and and let them talk really but ultimately a, an issue like self-harming would have to be referred yeah um, to the child protection team okay. um, I'm not sure confront is necessarily the right word um, I would make sure that I pass it on to other people in school so as there's uh, a more complete picture of kind of what's going on other people often know more about what's going on in students' lives than I do, um, but also I would speak to the student about it and see um, see whether it's something they wanted to talk to someone about, whether it's something they were still uh, coming to terms with themselves. Uh, I think first confront is not the right sort of word because that yeah. sounds sort of in the face. I think it's got to be dealt with sort of subtly uh, and sort of similar to the, the previous question. We've got procedures in place where it gets reported as a sort of a concern to yeah. the child protection officer. But I think it's really, really important that you don't make a big deal of it. It's subtly done, uh, maybe not even mentioned to the student at all, just passed on to, okay. to the, uh, the people who deal with those sort of issues. Yeah. Not differently um, in a negative sense. I would perhaps be a little more aware of them. Yeah. Um, and only treat them differently in a positive, like definitely not in a negative sense. Um, I really hope not. No, I think um, it's important to realise that it is a form of illness. It's not something that they they've chosen for themselves, um, and they just need support and help to, to get better. Uh, as a classroom teacher, probably not. Um, I think I would my maybe be slightly more understanding if homework was late or if certain yeah. things weren't done. But as a general teacher, I think it's important to try and keep things as normal as possible. Yeah. Uh, but probably just maybe a little bit more understanding. But again, on a subtle level, I think it's important yeah. that person doesn't feel singled out or dealt with. If somebody suffers from something like anxiety, then yes, because it's going to make them very nervous when it comes to situations that put people under pressure or stress. So sporting environments often involve a lot of stress and pressure. So top level, psychology is a huge part in succeeding yeah. in sport. Depending on what illness that would be, would uh, lead to a different effect on their performance. So the anxiety would be the one that would come to mind. Depression, if they can't handle the defeats or the poor performances, um, they might need to see some sort of psychologist or some sort of counsellor who could help them out with their issues and maybe try and give them some strategies to work with. Um, but as a coach, it will be incredibly difficult because you'd probably be lacking the skills that you'd need. Yeah. Yes, 100% because without a healthy mindset it is very difficult to get into a positive mindset to go out and achieve and set targets and be able to accept disappointments and to be able to work towards goals without getting stressed and without becoming anxious and without becoming depressed or maybe even disappointed continually because you're in that dark cloud mindset of things aren't going well, I'm not good enough etc etc so yeah without mental health then the physical health is almost irrelevant. Okay. From these interviews with students and teachers with varied ages, genders and races from our school alone we get an insight into the range of views and knowledge about mental illnesses. Fortunately many of these people claim to know about what mental illnesses are, how serious an issue they are and seem willing to help if you were to suddenly be aware of a student or suffering.
However, unfortunately, we did not encounter a number of young students who have very little knowledge about the topic and were very unsure about where people could go for help. This is most upsetting, as everyone everywhere should feel safe and happy, more specifically in school. Students should feel like they have somewhere to go and have people to talk to. Students undergo a lot of stress in the period of their life, with one way homework, work, and responsibilities at home, and others' hobbies they enjoy. The last thing that should happen to these young, four potential children, is for their mental health to crumble. It is just as important as physical health, and that is what we want to raise awareness of and change. We want to make sure that all young people are educated on the subject, know where, uh -oh. about where to, and the comfortable should be someone to talk to. Thank you for listening.